Hello everyone and welcome back to Anime on Draft. Here we are again with episode 38 and we that I'm that I'm referring to <laughs> is your host you Alec. You He's remembering. <laughs> My two co-hosts, the loud one, Drew. I'm loud. <laughs> and, the, and the other one, Rolando. The other one. He's yeah. less loud. Yeah, he's less loud. Well, no one's as loud as you. You That's scream. Yeah. You're like I'm you're sorry. like Moon Moon. He's a screamer. <laughs> He's a screamer. He's loud. Or so, so, I've been told. So, I've been, so I've been told. Yeah. Nice, dude. Um, so anyways, today we've got um, our, you know, regular show. We're having fun. Everybody's enjoying it. I don't know where I'm going with this. So let's go straight into the beer. Um, today we have the Green Flash West Coast Double India Pale Ale or DIPA. Double IPA. I like the word DIPA. DIPA. Keep saying DIPA. Deepa, Deepa. <laughs> so this one was chosen by uh, Drew over here, and um, so why don't you give us a couple words on uh, your choice here? So I was pissed off last time because that saison was so fucking bad, and so I was thinking like we haven't done IPA in a while because I, I did agree we needed to move away from IPA, but I'm like I want something that I'm gonna like this time, <laughs> and I wanted something that was bold and flavorful and. What better to do that than a Dippa? So I chose the so, Green Flash Dippa. So you were pissed off that you didn't like it. So you decide to punish me. Yes. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense because I didn't even choose it. You little. <laughs> Anyways, so. <laughs> God damn it. There we go. Sorry. Can you? <laughs> um, so. Basically, um, that's that's the beer we got today. Um, so why don't we just jump into our first impressions that I'm um, dreading, and and you might notice a little difference. We're gonna kind of wind it back, and we're gonna give a more in depth conversation about the beer today. So for the viewers, for the viewers, go the ahead. Listeners, very floral <clears throat> scent. It smells so yes. good. Oh my god. Very floral. I do smell the citrus. You definitely smell the hops. There's no head. Yeah, I didn't have whatsoever. Any it stays for very a very short time and then it disappears. So you, you're stuck with kind of the, I would call it like a copper, like copper brown color, I guess, of the the beer, and then maybe I don't know, amber, copper amber, and then that's it. Amber. Well, the the color of the beer too is that stereotypical deep, um, deep yellow, deep orange, deep amber IPA color. Um, classic looks like an IPA. Dippa. It's like a dipa. But uh, mm-hmm. when I tasted it, it, it's it's not as bold and assertive as I as I thought it would be for a dipa. I mean. Anytime we get a double IPA, we always compare it to the mission, and this definitely isn't as bold as that, I would say. No. No. I can taste other things. <laughs> yeah. Besides just bitterness. Um, it's definitely not as overpowering <clears throat> as the mission uh, one was um, as double IPAs go. Kind of got Still that. leaves a lot of lingering bitterness on the edge of my tongue. Well, I mean, it's an IPA. Yeah, I was. Yeah. I'm actually going to disagree with that, but this is just my palate. I I don't get the lingering, and I think it finishes very smooth. Um, to each their own. <laughs> uh, the you get a lot of the very kind of uh, piney <clears throat> bitter that the mm-hmm. hops they're using um, gives off. So, I mean, it's a West Coast IPA because. Um, they're using a lot of hops from the West Coast. Um, and uh, these strains tend to be kind of that piney, ta- mm-hmm. like bitter taste. Mm-hmm, and it's pretty present in this. 
You know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of, and it's not an IPA, uh, it reminds me of the Sierra Nevada, the uh, Pale Ale. Um, the color is almost exactly the same as that, and it has a similar flavor profile in, in my mind. The the regular Pale Ale, the green bottle? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, the IPA is also a green bottle. Well, The light green bottle, right? The one that we've we've done before on the show. Mm, yeah. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it's it's all kind of the same to me, but um, it definitely has all the qualities of a double IPA. So, um, you know, good on them for that. So let's um, just add a little more, like thought to this uh this beer here. What do you guys think would be some good foods to pair with this beer? In case anyone's curious or wanting to eat while they're listening to our show. Any rich foods, like rich fatty foods, like mm-hmm. red meat? The thing that comes to mind for me, which maybe isn't a full meal, but like a loaded baked potato, like your bacon, your cheese, your chives, uh, some sour cream in there. I think that would be really good with this. You can even mm-hmm. eat, or like a potato skin. Like I think that would be good. That's more like snack food. But um, mm-hmm. I think I think that would go really well with this something something definitely hearty yeah um i think of chili Ooh, um, would, you could probably even with make this. chili with this i bet it would be good yeah or and then just but don't i'm gonna i'm gonna throw out a warning if you do make chili and you like your chili spicy if you're gonna pair it with this don't make it super spicy yeah because it could quickly oh, yeah. go from like ooh, this is that right kind of spicy to it's ouch fucking this burning sucks. my tongue <laughs> yeah, like this is painful. <clears throat> but if you have something that isn't quite as spicy as you want and you want to up it, grab an IPA or a dipa. <laughs> I don't um, think I don't think this would go definitely not with fish. Like no, don't no. drink this with I fish. I wouldn't put this with and fish. And I I wouldn't even drink it with chicken. I think it the chicken is too mild. It doesn't have enough bold flavors to kind of stand up to this. You need something more rich. Um, fish is too too delicate. light and delicate, yeah. yeah. Like an this would completely overpower that. it. I feel like if you made chicken, you could do it if you did it in a very robust marinade with a lot of like chili powder and Maybe cumin. like jerk chicken. Yeah, something yeah. like that. It would have to be very seasoned yeah. um, for it to hold its own. Otherwise, it's just going to get washed away. And then that's not what you want when you're eating well-seasoned chicken. Mm-hmm. We all do love well seasoned chicken. Um, but in <laughs> so, in general, though, like stuff with fat, yeah, is going yeah. to in general mm-hmm. be the the choice <clears throat> of food. I think tacos, like I think tacos would be good mm-hmm. with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could do tacos. Any kind of taco. You could do a lot of stuff with uh with ipas and dippas, but yeah. um, no fish though. Stay away from that. No fish. No fish. Um, if, you so, want, if you don't want to taste the fish, then yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or if you have a really spicy fish and you just want to destroy your mouth while not tasting anything, boom, Tastes you got spice. it. You'll just taste pain. <laughs> we all, well, here you go, Drew. Recipe right there. Taste pain. You think? You love pain. <laughs> you think I should do it? No, I don't think no. so. Okay. That sounds awful. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so anyways, with that, let's, uh, how about we go into our our ratings of the of this beer here drew you picked it so what do you think uh solid four for me um kind of just a stereotypical ipa <clears throat> it's good it's drinkable finishes well it would be good with a lot of different kinds of food that we as we've just described uh, excuse me um he finished his already <laughs> no i i i did um, I got the bomber. You guys got. Well, do you want to talk about that? Like how I how I misled you guys. Like, oh, how you how you <laughs> destroyed our wallets. <laughs> so I looked it up and I was like, okay, there's bombers of this. Like this will be good. It's like a nine dollar bomber. Like nothing crazy. And I looked it up at their Bethmos and I'm like, yeah, they they have this in the bomber and they're good to go. And then they go. And how much did it end up being? No they bomber. They didn't have the bomber, and it was a six pack. It was a six Fif- pack for fifteen ninety nine. Really lucky? Mine was seventeen fifty. Oh. oh, 
So uh, I, I apologize. That, I <laughs> yeah, after tax it was seventeen fifty. I apologize. I feel bad. Well, no, about that. My, I didn't. I didn't include tax in my essay. Oh, oh. But that was I don't before know tax. That, I think that includes tax. Yeah. Yeah. So I I apologize <laughs> for that. But uh, I hope you I hope you get your money's worth. I I would drink seventeen dollars worth of six pack of this. But uh, <laughs> if I yeah. were in San Diego, then I could have easily just gone to Green Flash because it's down the street. And gotten the beer. Gotten a little bottle. Yeah. Gotten a little yeah. bottle. It would have been like eight dollars. <laughs> but I mean, anyway, you could have just recorded there and gotten yeah. a fresh yeah. cup. Yeah. Yeah, just a fresh cup and just be fucking loud in the background. Just sit there recording your opinions. Hmm, excellent color. You know, there th- this taste though leaves something to be desired. Blah blah. And they're like, could you not do that in our establishment, this please? Is, like this like, is not a coffee shop. Uh, <laughs> can you, can you Why are you that? ragging on our beer in our brewery? Like that's <laughs> fucked up, dude. <laughs> but yeah, um, just kind of moving on. I, I give it a four. It's good. Um, <clears throat> I we've we've said this before in a lot of beers, but. If you're good on IPAs and you're ready to move to like beginner dippas and getting into trippas, like Ooh. this is this is this is oh. a good this is a good one tripe. to like move forward on. Oh, don't, don't drink don't drink the mission if you're like just moving into like this category of beer. Start with this and then kind of work. Or just don't up. drink so, it. Or just don't drink it. I mean, <laughs> you're a fool if you don't. But I like fool. It. I like it. <laughs> Very cool. I kind of expected a four coming out of you. Um, <laughs> Rol- <laughs> Rolando, what uh, what do you think about this one? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty standard. Uh, it's not as hoppy as the Mission, and I actually kind of liked that beer. So yeah. uh, it's still it's still good. I would I would say probably a four. Boom. Right on. Um, so obviously you guys know me, I'm not the biggest IPA fan at this time. Um, but I think it does meet the criteria of, of a Dippa. It's got the color. It does lack head, but the flavor is kind of what you expect. And it is on the lighter side. Um, given my own personal preference as well, I think I'd I think it deserves a four, but I'm going to knock it down to a 3.5 just because it's rough on my palate. <laughs> so you're evolving though, dude. Eh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't want to evolve. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to. Anyways. So with that, let's go ahead and move into our, we're going to, we don't, we don't have a show for weekly pairing today. So let's go ahead and just hop right into the, the happy hour segment, the happiest hour, <clears throat> the happiest hour. And, um, we'll start with one show that all three of us are watching and it's been going for a while now. Um, and then one of us just started watching it because they were a fool for yeah, a while. Me. That's me. Yeah. That's him. And uh, that show is The Ancient Magus's Bride. Um, so w- obviously we're in, it's the second season continuing from last season. And a lot has happened. If you've listened to these shots, you've gotten Rolando in my opinions on a lot of different things. Um, but since we have a third newcomer to this show for our show, um, we're going to get his opinions on the show at large, I guess, during this time. Uh, so Drew, what have you thought? Let's just give an overarching. What have you thought in general about Ancient Magi- Ancient Magus's Bride so far? I mean, I was. You're right. I was a fool not to start it. It's excellent. Um, just from the technical standpoint, animation is top quality. Music is top quality. Pacing is excellent. Uh, story, um, not my favorite. There are some things that I don't like about the story, but I think I don't want to judge that completely until I've seen like it completed um or at least to a point where it stopped so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna talk much about that but overall it's it's a it's a really excellent show um i don't like the main character though i she i find her super annoying um we joked about this and i think you guys talked about this on the shot she falls into water like way too often um get used to it because it happens a lot it's a drinking game every time she falls that really bugs me um (laughs) But I, I really like all the other characters. Like Ruth, Ruth is a good character. The little doggy. 
Um, I even like the character that doesn't even talk all the time. Um, oh, I love Silky. Silky. Yeah, Silky's the best. You need to watch the latest episode because yeah, Silky yeah. is the best. She, she's tight. Um, the, um, the actual mage, uh, he's tight. I like the priest character. I like um, the... Like, I guess she's an artificer, uh, the one who lives in, like, London. She's cool. Angelica. Um, I like mm-hmm. the chick who, who uh, or I guess he's a dude. The dude uh, who's with the uh, dragons, he's super cool. And let's talk about this for a second. That scene where um, they are spiriting away Nevin, the uh, the old uh, stone dragon. Like, oh, that hit me right in the feels. And that was Oh, when so, he becomes a tree. That was so sick. Like she gets him to fly again, yeah, and and that was that was super sick. That that whole episode or whole couple of episodes was super dope. Um, and that goes, scene is one of those scenes where you could have a group of dudes sitting in a room, and it's like I'm not crying, you're the one crying. <laughs> what, no, what's wrong with you? <laughs> so that and, and, yeah, that definitely really stood out to me. And then she goes back and like they talked about it, like come back and make a wand out of uh, my branches, and she does, and that's like full circle and she talked to him again super dope and then you also kind of get the backstory um with um blonde dude and uh uh the actual mage and so you're gonna get that story the one thing i think it needs a little bit more of is the conflict with um the sorcerers as well as like that main like trap dude like i thought it was a chick for like a while (laughs) and then it's it's not um i think they need more of that conflict but i just think um the show just needs to develop more and we'll get more of that. Um, final note before I talk about this too much. Um, I knew I was hooked on this show when um, <clears throat> they go into the flashback of the goo and then when they're with the cats and the, the chick just explodes yes. into goo, like in the <laughs> dude's arms. Like I'm like, all right, this show's sick. Like, let's go. <laughs> that was so tight. You're That's pretty deep into you it. Show. You're pretty deep <laughs> into the show if if you realize that you liked it then. <laughs> I mean, I, I liked it because I liked the, the first three like OVA episodes that kind of set it up. I thought that was like super excellent um, with the guy stuck in the library and his long lost love. Um, and yeah, the they, first three OVAs are very well, well done. And, and the thing that really makes that for me is when <clears> she's little and she sees like that old lady in the park and you don't think anything of her. You're like, oh, she's like wearing this kimono and she's like trying to call him, call her over. Um, and then it comes full circle, and that's actually the chick that who was supposed to receive the book from the librarian. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. this is so sick! Like that, that was super good. And then just exploding cat lady. So you know, good. you so know what that's thing. called though? It's called proper setup. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. You don't you don't put stuff into s- <clears throat> you don't put stuff into stories that don't um, have any significant meaning. Because otherwise, it's just um, random fluff. So the mm-hmm. fact that that points back to it makes sense story-wise, and it's it should. Yeah. Like they wouldn't yeah. ran like if they if they just put a random character like that, and then it didn't mean anything. Then it's just poor storytelling. Yeah. And crap. and I think that's sometimes, especially with these like lower tier shows that we sometimes watch, it's what they lack. And so this this just shows me that you know this is good storytelling. Um, it kind of comes full circle, and you and nothing is kind of out of place. And that's something that a lot of shows <clears throat> lack. And I really appreciate this show for doing that. Um, so overall, um, I really enjoy it. Um, super good for all the reasons I've described. So don't be an idiot like me if you've been waiting to kind of watch this. <laughs> I caught up, I think, in two days. <laughs> um, so do it now before it becomes Monogatari and then 96 episodes. Um, and yeah, it's 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 a good show. So, so look forward to seeing kind of what happens. So you didn't, you don't like the fact that she falls in the water a lot? Yes. Did you listen to any of the shots we did? No. Okay. We actually talked about because that. we talked. You should about listen it. to our. You last should listen shot. to it. But I'll All briefly right. elaborate, and I'm pretty sure the reason why Chise falls into water a lot is so it's like because rebirth. yes, mm-hmm. and water is like like a kind of universal, um, yeah. like cleansing, cleansing. 
Um, and, and that's and that's what I thought too. And I was just kind of I was kind of making light of it. Um, it does. I think it does happen a little bit too often if they're going for that sort of motif. Um, but like the first couple times it happens, and she has kind of a revelation as she's floating in the water. So I do kind of agree. It's kind of this like coming, like being reborn into this new world of magic and all that stuff. But I think they're kind of over milking it. Um, um, in that sense, watch watch the latest episode, and it will make sense because I feel mm-hmm. like it's the culmination of all of it, and then you realize what's different this time. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the other kind of theme that they have a lot when in the water is she always falls in and floats there for a while. Yeah. So it's, it's showing her emotional limbo basically. So. Well, and it's, you know, when you're born, it's not just like this all of a sudden process. It's like a whole thing. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I think authors and a lot of other mediums use that a lot. So I, <laughs> I, I do appreciate it. Um, I'll watch the next episode and I can come back and kind of give my opinion if it, if it does change from that. But I think it's a cliche that's used a little bit too much um, in the show. But I'll save my judgment um, for the latest episode. The um, what you guys were talking about earlier with um, proper setup and how things come back full circle and and point to previous stuff. It, it's the um, the source material is just. The, it does that in the show because the source material is excellent at all of that. The source material is ex- just really great. Um, the manga, it, it all, like, nothing is out of place. There are little, like, nuances that you notice, and then they come back, and, like, the, um, just just like her wand is an example of that, how it's like the, the red bird with the big eyes, and in the show they make them the same color. It's just little notes like that that... They do a really excellent job of in the show and in the manga to so highlight you'd say, notes. You'd say it's like pretty consistent across mediums. Yeah, the only thing that's kind of inconsistent between the two is some translations, mm-hmm. and the manga generally does a little better job of translating things. Where like they call them sorcerers in in this show in the show, right? The mm-hmm. so there's mages and sorcerers. They call them mage mages and alchemists in the manga. And alchemist kind of fits what they do better than sorcerer. <clears throat> and so personally there, there's a couple other like instances of that, but the think, it's not yeah. to the point where it detracts from the I think I think it's the all show kind of the way. same though where sorcerers are have an understanding of like the universe and like physical <laughs> mediums, which alchemists do as well. Um, whereas mages use uh, other sources like fairies and you know energy to conjure or you know <clears throat> use their magic so um, I can see that I can I can see but the way they kind of explained it at least for me is like I said the sorcerers kind of have an understanding of the physical universe um, <clears throat> much <throat> like alchemists um, yeah whereas I think more alchemists uh, manipulate elements and I haven't seen that so much in the show. Um, maybe it's more so in the uh, the manga. But they had, like I said, I, I want more of that. I want more of that conflict, and we haven't seen that so much um, in the in the uh, manga. Show. It's more that I think they call them alchemists because they're manipulating in this world. They're manipulating the element of magic. They're manipulating the like, energy, and I think yeah, we talked about it in because you brought it up in a shot. And I'm I pretty sure I talked I talked about the difference in like the actual words they're using in Japanese. And so it's like Mahotsukai is like someone who uses magic and those are the mages. And so they use magic. They require the assistance of the neighbors mm-hmm. um, to to help them. But they don't really need anything other than an incantation and focus because they're deriving the and the magical mm-hmm. energy from other sources whereas the sorcerers slash alchemists have a com- have a better understanding of how everything works so they're able would to you, use yeah sorry would you but, say uh for the alchemists or the sorcerers it's more study whereas the mages it's just natural talent um i would say for the mages it's more of being attuned to and at one with the <clears throat> magic and the nature and, you know, kind of letting the natural order of things um, just you manipulate the natural order of things to to use magic versus the sorcerers 
where they're kind of forcing things. They're forcing a change in the laws. The way I kind of thought about it when I first was reading it was the mages were Jedis and the alchemists were scientists. Oh. Or like, (laughs) or Sith. But like in terms of like just a human scientist um, where the Jedis kind of have that oneness like Rolando was just saying. But both of them do a lot of study. As you can see in the show, like Chise is practicing. Right. But it's a different method of practicing. So okay. when I was thinking, that's kind of the idea I had. Um, and it helped me kind yeah, of I grasp see, I see it. That. Yeah. I see, I see that for sure. Um, but all in all, definitely an excellent show. Um, and I note, suggest everyone reads it. Side <laughs> note, is this um, the same studio that did Full Metal Alchemist? This is Wit Studio. So Attack on Titan... I don't know who did Full Metal Alchemist. It was not Wit Studio. It was somebody else. Um, Wit Studio is fairly new. Or I don't uh, know the if other fairly note, new. But. The, uh, so I think the most recent episode is in volume, is the goes to the end of volume five, and we have six and seven. Uh, so we still have plenty of uh, source material, and the next volume is slated to come out uh, middle of next month. How popular month. is this in Japan? I actually don't know. I haven't looked into that, but that's actually a interesting thing to look into because um, kind of it seems really show, popular. And I feel like Japan is really hit or miss on the slower shows. <clears throat> I'm not sure about its popularity in Japan, but it did get two back to back seasons. So I mean, can't, it can't be too unpopular. <laughs> it's got a very deliberate um, pace to it. And I, mm-hmm. I feel like there's not a lot of shows that can do that well. I agree. Mm -hmm. But um, on that note, before we go on and on, because this show you easily can, let's move (laughs) on to our next show that all three of us have watched as well. And it's also very excellent. And that's Violet Evergarden. We've gotten two episodes so far. The pilot episode Rolando and I talked about was very good. And this second episode was also extremely good. I especially liked the ending. The ending really hits the feels. Um, <clears throat> but here, let me throw it back to you one more time, Drew. You watched the first episode, um, but you didn't get to talk about it the last time we mentioned the show. So uh, how'd you like the the start of the show, the pilot? It's, it's a lot of setup. Um, a lot of questions kind of arise. Um, but um, overall, very good. Uh, we kind of see this character, Violet, and we don't know much about her. Is she fully a robot? Is she fully a weapon? Is she like a human that was just brainwashed? Like we don't really know. Um, And we can see, you know, her, and I don't even want to say emotional development, but somewhat of an emotional development um, because she's so like set in or brainwashed into her like military days and even the uh, the president guy, he's even like, you know, the war is over, bitch. Like, you don't have to be a soldier anymore. And she just doesn't get it. Um, but it's, it's nice to see her kind of coming into this new industry of being a doll or somebody who writes letters uh, for people who are illiterate. Um, and just wanting to understand um, the concept of love, which is awesome it's 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 how she's going to develop as a person and she's going to come out of this um she's going to come out of being kind of like this straightforward doesn't understand human emotion and the intricacies of human nature um and by her understanding love she'll kind of grow and become an actual person which is i think what the major wanted even though he's dead now even though she doesn't know um it's <gasps> kind of what everyone spoilers <laughs> and that's that's kind of what everyone around her um as they kind of meet her and she kind of grows on them cuz she's annoying she's she's like a fucking annoying character <laughs> like people are coming in and saying like oh, I'm going to write this letter. And she's just like so straightforward and gets in trouble for it like multiple times. Um, So we'll kind of see her development. And, you know, she kind of grows on people. And even in the second episode, we see 
uh, she grows on one of the dolls in particular because she sees herself in her. Like, she's, yeah, she's like, I'm not very good at this, but she's even worse at it. And they're going to kind of <clears throat> grow together to become better at what they do and understand uh, why they do it. Um, like you said, Erica, the glasses nerdy chick. Um, she kind of forgot why she got into the business. And in the second episode, we kind of get that resolution where she's like, I remember reading about the inventor of the typewriter and his wife, um, who is blind, who can no longer uh, write and just remembers that whole story. And she's like, I'd forgotten about that. But because of Violet, she comes back and remembers that and is kind of energized to do better at her job because Violet sucks at her job. She sucks at being a doll, but like Erica's not very good either. Um, and it's well, she not doesn't because... understand the same things Violet. She doesn't really understand to the same extent that the lead big yeah. booby chick. Yeah, and and, and she won't speak up for herself. Um, yeah. And so I think maybe <clears throat> they kind of come together and then they both grow together because big booby chick is great at it, uh, especially understanding like the romantic undertones of a lot of the love letters that patrons want to her to write and the other ones don't really get it like the one uh the short-haired girl who can't even walk in heels um she can't even spell so how is she going to be good at this um erica you know doesn't understand like she understands emotion but she can't portray it in a way that big booby chick can uh uh, portray it and so it's like all of them are going to kind of have to come together and depend on one another and grow together as kind of a, a team um, big booby chick is is better at top tier. Uh, word manipulation it's than, top tier. Than well, she, understand, she understands the intricacies of women which I mean none of us and will men. understand so the, and men too. The That's way true. I kind of the way I kind of see it is these auto machine dolls are kind of like um, they're kind of like let they're letter writers in the sense that they're similar to a lot of the famous female auth novelists and authors. Um, of you know, like fuck, I'm I can't even remember like I an example. I know name. what you're talking. I know what you're talking about. It's like <laughs> early times where they had to take like pen names because no one would read it, a book written by a woman. Yeah, like. Mm -hmm. Because, um, like a good term that would describe this is flowery diction. And a lot of those female novelists used very flowery diction. So they were very good with how they kind of manipulated words to get across a certain meaning and not in a sense of being super direct, but you, they could be circular and roundabout. It was just the style of writing. And I kind of so feel the like complete these opposite of Violet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes, exactly. And so the yeah. way the machine dolls are kind of assumed to work is that they write in this certain flowery diction and they write these letters for people, regardless of whether they can, you know, read or write or not. And they're able to convey a certain meaning that they're telling them in written in a completely different way. That's more, like frou frou flowery. Um, well, they can they can deal. portray emotion. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. Like, and that's why Violet struggles so much because she doesn't understand human emotion. She's like the most basic human male that has ever been. She's been in the army. She kills people. She's a like a good weapon. And she's she, she was doesn't know what I love not, you means. Yeah, she was I don't even think she's not. She's past her. like the most basic male. She's like actually an AI where you, you see it specifically where she's talking to Erica and and she goes, I'm not really cut out for this, am I? And then she goes, I guess you could say the same thing about me. And then she goes, we're not talking about you. <laughs> oh, I yeah, was asking yeah, about yeah, me. <laughs> and she shuts her down and you just sit there and you're like, oh, fuck, Damn. like that was ruthless. But but. And that's uh, just who she is. Go, right going now. off of that though, that's super good character development because Erica then goes in like twenty mm -hmm. minutes later and defends her and is like, <clears throat> you know, she needs to stay here and I'll train her and I'll help her and like we'll all grow together. And but Violet doesn't get about. it. She, of course not. And so she's like, You're contrary. Yeah. <laughs> You're being contrary. And then but, she blushes, but, but Erica gets but it. How how good of 
like development is that for basically someone to come up to you and say you're a fucking bitch and you suck at your job <laughs> like you know fuck you and then going from that to like defending her in in a, a very different way than i kind of just said it but yes the, very the, different <laughs> the, 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 but the me the same the same meaning is there and so mm-hmm. that's that's just super good character development and that's that's good storytelling just like we've been saying yeah. all the time i think and, yeah what I saw, like, in what Erica saw in Violet was, um, so Violet sees that Erica and the other dolls have better understanding of emotions and what love means and all that sort of stuff. Erica is kind of in a middle ground where she gets it, but not to the extent that Big Booby Chick gets it. Well, she can't um, portray it. Yeah, and and I think what Erica sees in violence of violence in, in violet, violet. <laughs> what Erica sees violet. in violet that she, why she wants her around is her insane mental toughness because despite being told that she sucks ass and then getting scolded and then like all this other shit happening to her, she's like, I still want to keep at this yeah. because I want to know what this means. Yeah. And Erica wants to understand that kind of Have that aspect of her. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, what I think that's what I got out of it at least. Um, but, uh, all in all. And then the, for me, the, the ending was, like I said before, that was probably the most impactful scene in the, in the show. Just like, that was a really impactful scene just because the way they portrayed the, um, the Colonel, when he was talking about his friend, they did a really, really good job of portraying his emotions and it really tugs at your heartstrings. Um, well, they, they when do he's at the bar. They do a very good job of framing the scene in that <laughs> sense because they either in a dark bar and they never really show his face <clears throat> completely. They just show his mouth. They, they like mask things to show kind of, like something is he's not telling the full truth um about about everything until he's just like he was the uh or like he was he had a character yeah, he, he had, yeah. Mm-hmm. so it's it, it was like a pretty um i i just think that the like the cinematography of the show is is done is done very well I agree. um just like Magis bride um Magis mm-hmm. bride does a very good job as well, but I feel like Kyo Annie in particular. Kyo Annie, that's what I was gonna talk about too. Um, they they in particular are very good at making <clears throat> an animation feel like an like a film. Yep. And even even yeah. in some of their more lighthearted things, um, like Amagi Brilliant Park, and you know some of the lighthearted things, there's always beautiful animation. Um, and they portray emotion very well and you just, you always come back and you want more. Um, it's just the style that they use and you're, you're always, you're always there and you just, you, you want to see more because not only is it beautiful, but it's, it's done in a way and you, maybe this is more towards the director, um, but it's it's just it's done in a way where it's like you you just crave more and the pacing is so good the animation <clears> is so good everything just all ties together and you're like just this is just a good show so props to um, to them I I, mm-hmm. I enjoy most of the animes that they produce so yeah this is definitely a excellent excellent representation of their skills um, what, um Alec yes. I wanted to see if you kind of picked up on this but did you notice the uh so like whenever they show violet she's kind of got this very stoic face and like mm-hmm. even her eyes are kind of dead mm-hmm. but whenever she's talking about um the about gilbert mm-hmm. her eyes the kind major. of come to life and like the they way like they light an- up the way they animate that and then like they show her hands like even though they're robotic hands like they show them like <clears throat> tightening their grip and like She's like grasping onto things and like she's way more animated. Mm hmm. And yeah, well, they emphasize that, too, when she got the emerald back and she looks at it and then she looks back at the colonel and her uh, they emphasize it with his reaction because they zoom in on her eyes and then he is like, oh, wow, like she's not a robot, essentially. But um, yeah, they they 
I actually really like that they keep doing that. Um, with the, it, it's just interesting because her character is obviously developing the whole time, so they keep doing that, and it's making her more interesting to me. A couple things I want to add on that. Um, <clears throat> in the last scene where she's like in her room and she's like looking at the emerald, like that's the most emotion you've I, you've probably <clears throat> ever seen from her with, throughout the entire show. She has she's holding up the emerald. It's um, you know refracting light, and then she kind of sighs and like drops down in her bed but and she even sort of half smiles and so it's it's just like a ton of emotion you don't see that from her at all she like Um, bites on the thing yeah i think right um just like she did with the little puppy uh the puppy uh doll or whatever that the Mm -hmm. colonel gives her Um, yeah it's like a recurring theme and then one other way that you kind of see her like dead emotion is a lot of times when they shoot her and you see her um, in scenes. They shoot they, her? Oh, poor girl. <laughs> they, they, they show her full body. They don't zoom in on her face a lot of the times. They show her in her entirety. In her entirety and a lot of times. In tidy. Her, in tidy. tidy. Uh, <laughs> but like a lot of times like she has this blank expression. Her arms are at mm-hmm. her side. and Or she's, she's saluting. Yeah, or she's doing something. Like but it's showing like, her full body and she has no emotion. But where she does get um, get emotional is exactly what you're saying, uh, Rolando, is when she's thinking about the major uh, Gilbert. Um, and I think the most powerful scene is when she's learning the typewriter and like rolls up her sleeves and is like adjusting – her fingers so that they work properly with the machine. She's like dedicated to like, okay, I'm going to get in here and concentrate and learn how to do this so I can understand this emotion. Um, so super, super powerful scene there. That as well as the one I talked about with her in her bedroom, looking at the brooch, um, very, both very powerful scenes. Yes. Very cool. Yeah. Um, definitely Good looking show. forward to, episode three on this one and all Yo, of the episodes they have to come. Um, this is cause what wasn't a silent voice done by Kyo Annie too. Yes. So this is a nice them. change of pace for me from that because it wasn't bad, but this is by far watch much really better hard. than that. Um, <laughs> but, uh, before we run out of time, let's move on to our last topic here. Um, so we're going to talk about whiskey today. Um, whiskey. Mm. Yes. Um, I know we, we can start off. Um, it's been a theme this whole time starting off with drew, but, uh, drew went to Bevmo recently and you got a, Oh, today. And you got a, a, an interesting sounding, uh, scotch, correct? Um, yeah, it, it does. It sounds interesting and kind of unappealing, but how about I let you go ahead and, uh, describe it or explain what it is. I feel like I've talked a lot this episode. You have, yeah. Is that just yeah. me? No, you have. Yeah, I'm you just have. Going, I'm going for it. <laughs> <laughs> so I have, I have the actual scotch in front of me. I've been kind of nursing it um, as I've been drinking the beer. Um, so what this is, I was going down Bevo and I, I got the beers and I made you guys buy like really expensive beer. And again, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> but I was there and I was looking for Can't scotch. buy food for a week. <laughs> And so I was looking. For, I was looking for scotch or whiskey. I didn't know what I wanted, and um, I actually picked up a bottle of Four Roses. Scotch is whiskey. Uh, well, they are, but um, <laughs> I picked up a bottle of Four Roses, and I'm like, "I'll just, I'll get this. This is good." And so I put that in my cart, and I'm starting to walk to the teller, and I see something that catches my eye because uh, I am a big uh, Glen Fittish fan, um, which is scotch from Scotland. And uh, I'm like, oh, I've never seen that bottle before or that package before because they kind of come in like little tubes. Like whenever you buy Scots, they usually come in like cardboard <laughs> tube looking guys. They and come so in a cool looked, box. And I, uh, and I looked at it and, I'm, and it says um, first edition um, IPA barrel age Scotch whiskey. And I said, hmm, I like Scotch and I like IPAs. What can go wrong? So I, I picked this up. Um, it is a um, – it is – and even on the bottle it says like first edition um, experimental scotch. And so I, I kind of hope they kind of experiment a little bit more from it. But I guess a brewer um, in Scotland of craft brews and um, the head um, 
I forget what he, what the head scotch person is called, but the head scotch person at Glen Fittage kind of came together and collaborated on this. I, I believe it's a 12 year scotch, 12 year age, but it is aged in IPA barrels. So it's supposed to have kind of these citrusy, fruity notes that we've been talking about with the beer that we had tonight. Um, I'm going to take another sip of this uh, as it's been sitting here, and I will tell you my impressions. Um, so give me a second here. It's Since it's been out and been in ice, it tastes a little bit better than my initial drink of it. But it's, it's really weird. It is... Like what's years, the flavor profile? It's like it's like twelve year scotch, peaty, um, earthy, um, not so, not as smooth as something that's aged like fifteen to eighteen years, but it is citrusy as well, which is something you do not expect from scotch at all, and it is it is very strange to me. Um, I, I really want you guys to taste this, but it was like a seventy dollar bottle, so I'm not like go out and buy this oh and try my it. Um, <laughs> no, thank you. So I, I, I wouldn't wouldn't recommend. I'm not this. gonna spend seventy on a taste. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, if you guys were up here, um, I would I would let you try it, but it's it's not. As I drink it a little bit more, it's kind of growing on me. It's it's not bad, but it's not really scotch. It's. I don't even know how to describe it. It's it's citrusy, which scotch shouldn't be. Like I expect more citrus from like a rum or something like that. But even that, it's like more sugary. This isn't any of those things. It's like citrusy and scotchy. So it's like earthy and peaty and like orange peely. And it's really it's really weird. But I kind of, I kind of like the more I've drink it. Like I didn't like it when I first, I took my first. Did sip. you try it without any ice or I water tried it without or anything? Any ice and I didn't like it. And then I tried <laughs> it. I tried it with ice, and I still didn't like it. But as I've been drinking it a little bit more, it's kind of growing on me. I'm gonna take another sip here. Um, so would you say it's a disappointment? Hmm. <clears throat> See, I took another sip, and it's kind of at, like, room temperature, um, but it has a little bit of water in it. So I think what I'm going to do next time is put a couple ice cubes and a splash of water and let it cool a little bit and then try it before I judge it fully. But it, it, it is kind of growing on me because I think, Alec, you were there when I took the first sip, and I was yeah, like, you oh, didn't this, like it. this is weird. Yeah, I don't, you're I don't like, like, this it. isn't very good. <laughs> um, but as I've kind of drinking it more and it's it's watered down and it's kind of um, gotten closer to room temperature, I kind of like it a little bit more. But definitely very weird. Very, very weird. I've never tasted anything like this. Like, it's it's experimental, like they said. Um, okay. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like sad or mad that I bought this for $70. Like, I'll drink it. Like, it's definitely drinkable. But it's 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 like nothing I've ever tasted before. So it's gonna take me a while to kind of understand. Like it's gonna take me half a bottle before I understand if I like it or not. So to be continued. <coughs> That's a lot of alcohol. Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna drink it in so, a day. Like it's gonna be over. Yeah, he's gonna drink a half a bottle in a day. That's where he's gonna give his opinion. I dare you. Know, you. <laughs> you know what I want? I want to <laughs> drink this with a cigar because I bet with a cigar this would be really good. So I'm just gonna gotta go get the right thing. cigar. That's true. A super peppery cigar. I bet it would be good with like a super peppery, like dark wrapper cigar. Pepper. It would be good. Peppery. Pepper. Uh, 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 with that, let's, uh, you know, Fuck. so we're, we're talking about whiskey that is weird. And I'm going to throw it out there because it's hard to think of whiskey that may have been weird. So whiskey that was weird and or disappointed you. Um, it can be scotch, bourbon, rye, um, Canadian, uh, Irish. Oh, that um, sounded a little pointed when you said Canadian. Wow. <laughs> like, yeah, Canadian. Whiskey that disappointed you, Canadian. <clears throat> what do you got against the Canadian? <laughs> I Canadian said whiskeys? bourbon, scotch, rye, Canadian. But the way you said it just seemed like <laughs> it was yeah. so. So, so uh, Rolando, <laughs> does anything come to mind for you that may have been a little weird off or disappointed you that you thought would have been good? Um, well, I have to say that as much as I like Glenlivet, 
Um, I don't really like what is it the the twelve year and the sherry casks or whatever. The is it is the twelve year and is sherry it the twelve year? It's the one. It's the one that's not like the eight. It's not the eighteen year. Um, well, there's twelve and fifteen. I think usually for Glenn Livet. <laughs> Um, it's probably the 12 because I, I think, think is it's it the one I you tried with me that one time. Yeah. It was and the 12. That's what yeah. I had. It was 12. It's just kind of weird. Um, I don't, I don't particularly, I'm not a particular fan of it, but mm-hmm. cause like I've had needs a lot of water. Yeah. I've had the 18 the and 18 is, and it's the 18 is very good. Yeah, the 18 is excellent. But, like, I think it's, like, the 12. It's in, like, a, sh- a sherry cask or whatever. And it it's just got, like, a kind of odd floral taste to it that I don't think is very nice for scotch. So, I mean, that that's kind of my yeah, the disappointing 12, one. I agree. Was it's You have to have ice and a lot of water because <laughs> it's, it's kind of a rough one to drink. Um that's pretty characteristic, I, though, of a lot of twelves. Twelves are like not aged enough. I I personally don't think I'm I'm willing to spend the more money for a fifteen, just because it tastes exponentially better. I've had like a twelve Glen Fittich, and it wasn't like the floral. twelve Glen Fittich. I was gonna say the, too is the actually twelve Glen Fittich pretty is good. good for a twelve. I I agree yeah. with that. But I, I was actually the gonna. Is just I was weird. gonna say. Um, surprisingly the so the way the the scotch i was it's gonna be scotch the scotch i was disappointed with actually was the glenn fittich 15 i am not a big fan of that that. (laughs) thank you for saying that yeah i am not a big fan i so uh drew you and i tried it yeah way this it's been a while since it was almost when we started the podcast it was around that time it was it was either when we started or like right before we started because we had a cigar right when we were doing that yeah so we because we had the 14 and a cigar Mm -hmm. and the 14 the glenn fittich 14 everybody get it it's excellent it's u.s stuff it's a u.s only exclusive if you're in the u.s get it find it order it online (laughs) it's really good the 14 is really good the 15 we got the 15 thinking it would be good. It's like 30 extra dollars. It's not bad, but it's definitely disappointing. It leaves a lot to be desired. It had I don't I can't really describe it. The flavors were just not as good. I'm it's been such a long time and since I, I've tried I it, felt, but I felt that it wasn't as smooth as the 14. It was it definitely had more bite to it. Um and then the flavor profile was lacking something. Well, I and, don't and, remember what it was at me, the time. for me, I but. like really peaty scotch. Mm-hmm. But the 15 was like above and beyond that bitter, <clears throat> poopy, it was just like dirt. peaty, dirt flavor. Whereas the 14 was like, it was smooth, right? Like The 14 was really smooth. And, and we tried it with water mm-hmm. and ice and without completely, mm-hmm. just like sipped it dry um the 15 we did the same thing yep. we tried both of them with cigars very yep. similar cigars yep. too yep. and the 15 just lacked um it just wasn't the 15 good. was it was just like drinking liquid like dirt with alcohol yeah. it, it's i mean maybe not that bad i'm sure they're definitely like i if we drank it again we could find redeeming like it's qualities drinkable, but it's drinkable yeah. but like if you're paying 30 less dollars for the 14 mm-hmm Go to just get go the, with the 14. 14. It's like way yeah. better. <laughs> yeah, the 14 was good, but the so the for me the probably the scotch that I was most disappointed in after especially after the hype that we gained from the 14 was is the 15. The if, 15. If you, did, if you didn't mention that for years, I was going to just like do a side note Chime and in. mention <laughs> that because I definitely agree with that. Yeah. But um with that note, this is our kind of our, our third topic for the for the happy hour segment but uh, we're gonna have to go ahead and and cut it there because we're running out of time people we're, we're running out of real or whatever they say in the show businesses <laughs> we're running um, out of so sunlight we're running out oh. of sunlight it's we're run, sorry we're, we're running out of moonlight all right it's about to be daytime and we have to sleep so uh, with that uh, thank you everyone for listening we really appreciate it to get all our other episodes. All our shots, Dip our up. one blog post that uh, Rolando posted, um, 
you can <laughs> get it on our WordPress, animeondraft.wordpress.com. You can also get some updates about us on Twitter, anime on draft at anime on draft. Can I say and, this? Uh, you, can I say this? You can big, also get us what? Big, change, Go, big changes to come. Big changes to come. Well, big it's, it's can, I, t- can I say that? TBD because we don't know if, if if it's actually going to happen. Yeah, TBD possible possible changes big changes to come. Yeah, possible. So I said it. So keep a lookout for that. Yeah, he said it. And then uh, SoundCloud, oh, wow. iTunes, and YouTube. Search for anime Sound on loud. draft. <laughs> Sound loud. <laughs> um, so <laughs> with that, this is episode thirty-eight. Dippa. It's been fun, everybody. Another dippa. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.